Hey, what's up everybody? In today's video, I am going to digitize this very cool looking trident and I am going to make this file available for free download so you can follow along. So check the description down below and let's start with a fresh brand new canvas. So this artwork, it's measuring. So down below, you could see my measurement. It's at 2.1 inches. There's a little gap here. So by the time we digitize this, this should be at about two inches. So I'm going to lock this, push K, just want to lock it. I don't want this to move. And you can see here, I got it perfectly. Actually, it's almost perfectly centered. Let me unlock this and shift it a tad bit. Now it is perfectly centered. Now I could lock it down. One thing that I want to look out for, this part of the arrow, I want it to look like one piece. Now the problem, if I measure it from one corner all the way to the next corner, we're at about 13 and a half millimeters, which is too long. For this one, I want to be about, I want to be below 10 millimeters. What I want to do, it's kind of like a little trick that I do. I'm going to create a run stitch. All right. This is what I use to measure my distance. I'm looking at my measurement down bottom right. It says 9.13. What I want to do is turn this into 10 millimeters. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to adjust this. I want to know where's my uh, maximum 10 millimeters. So I'm going to say, I'm going to make a mark here. And what I'm doing is I'm setting a guide to let me know what's the maximum length I can go here. So this is my, I don't want to go above 10 millimeters. So I could create a shape up here. All right. So you could see here when I'm measuring it, exactly 10, go all the way to this corner and because any lower, my satin stitch would be too long. Okay, you could go 11 millimeters. I want to keep it at 10, just so it doesn't get too loosened up. Let's change this color to blue here. There's so many different ways to create this arrow here. I want it to look very sharp, very clean, all like one piece. So what I do, I kind of do something different than the normal traditional way. What I'm going to do, I'm going to have this going a different route. So check what I'm going to do here. So I got, this is as one side and then up here. All right, so what I have is something that looks like this. And I want this to look more rounded. So what I'm going to do, H, select these two pieces here. Then I could just lift it up. So I'm pushing the arrow to go up just to give it a little bit more curve. This one here, I created it first just so I can show you this long piece. This is really going to be the longest piece that I'm going to have. And if you can see here on my right hand side, it's showing a maximum stitch 10.4. And then that 0.4 really, that's just that that 0.4 was added there because of the push pull compensation. All right. If we take this off, you'll see how I have 10 millimeters if I take out the pull compensation but we'll keep that there. That's just standard uh, push pull. This is going to be the last part that gets digitized. All right, but we'll just leave it there for right now. So let's go ahead and my focus, I want this design to be kind of like a universal design where you could either stitch it on a polo, you could stitch it on a hat and that's possible if we kind of think about it during the digitizing. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create the left side of the trident first the right side and then the middle last. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to start here on the right hand side and I'm just going to create some walking stitches and I'm anticipating some of the gaps that can possibly occur. All right. So bam, we start here, kind of ignore these two right here. Let me hide these and then this green one, I could delete it here. Okay, let's create this first part, this first arrow on the trident. So I'm gonna use column B, of course, that's my favorite one. Let me set my settings. I'll put the underlay last. And I'm gonna do one side first. So digitize one side first. I wanna get a good trace. So notice I just had three clicks here. And the amount of clicks that I put is very important. I'm gonna tell you why, because it makes it easier when you're editing, the least amount of clicks that you have, the easier it is to edit some of this, all right? So here, I got kind of like a perfect trace. 
uh, H, let's put a um, stitch angle to kind of go this way perfectly like that. I want this one to open up a tad bit. All right, but what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create, I'm gonna select this side here because I want this part of the arrow to be real bold and sharp. I'm gonna pull this out. So just by pulling these three nodes here, all right, it gives me a perfect shape still. It doesn't lose its, um, its look. H, and what I wanna know here is where do I start? So this is where my run stitch ended. This is where this object's gonna start. And then I want it to end at this corner right here. Now I could create this left side. And let me show you traditionally, when you make this L, it looks like an L. Let's digitize this real quick. Let me show you the traditional way. I'm gonna change it. I'm not gonna keep it like this, but let me show you how normally you would do it. All right, traditionally you would do it like this, right? If it's all in one shot. But what I don't want, I'm gonna change it up a tad bit. I want my angles, so if you see my angle, it's kind of going this way right here. You see this angle? If you follow the angle of the stitches, it's going like this way, all right? If you follow the angle. But I want my angles, delete. I want my angles to be more on the horizontal plane. So I want it to be going more like this way. All right, so this is kind of like my preference here. What I want to do, let me delete that. And let me show you the little change that I would do. Same thing, start up here. And I'm going to break up this piece here into two pieces. All right, I'm going to create first this part that's going down because I want to keep this angle right here. All right. You see how my angles are, are very close to horizontal. Like it's not, it's not turning real tight. Create this one separate. All right, so it looks like this. Let me fix this. You can always go back and fix some of these. Bam. All right, so we're looking good here. Let me go H here. I want to start there. I want to end at this corner. And then this one, H, I want to start here. Yep, and there, bam, perfect. And what I want to do, I'm going to create a run stitch and just walk on over to my next location. All right, bam, bam. Now, let's use the power of copy and paste. Let's grab one, two, three, duplicate, mirror. All right, duplicate that there. And let me just tell you this. If, if you have a software that doesn't have, you know, some of these features like duplicate, mirror, you're, you, all you're doing is redigitizing it again. Okay, so it's not the end of the world. Uh, I've been playing with uh, other software. I've been playing with Chroma, with Brilliance, and I'm understanding the different softwares better and better. And I am going to start working on tutorials on those. All right, I just don't want to start the tutorials until I feel like I know what's going on. All right, but I am getting a good sense. I am going to do some reviews and all that good stuff. Here, I got a since these there's going to be a connection at this area i want to create a bridge here all right now i could create this bar all right bam h i want to end there yeah but i want to start up here at this top all right now let me bring these guys back all right now let me just fix this sequence I want overlap here. You see how right now I don't have much overlap. So let's just bring this up a tad bit. All right, so here, this is what I'm talking about. Here we have this, we have this intersection. 
we have this guy here coming in and then we have this one after second and these stitches are going to want to pull that's why we we created that bridge up here you could add more bridge uh, more links to this bridge if needed so there's different ways to kind of try to avoid some of this gap that could occur up here is create your line at an angle just so these stitches don't open up uh, all right I walk up here and then start stops we want to put where do you want to start where do you want to stop every object has its start stop so you want to make sure you put them in the correct place to avoid cuts I should start here then let's create a walk stitch all right and then I'll, I'll, I'll play this in slow motion so we could kind of see what's happening so right now you can see it doesn't have any underlay so let's go ahead I'm gonna put a very standard underlay edge run bump this to a 45 uh, and a double zigzag so we know we're getting good coverage double zigzag now let's verify our start stops and our cuts because right now showing three cuts I only want one let me show my cuts so here this circle is where I start okay and then all these cuts are showing up up here um, I remove all the stitches I just want to see the boundaries I'm gonna put H here I want to start here All right, H, I have to start here at this corner because that's where I'm going to connect. Bam, okay. Let's look at our trims. One trim. That's how I like to digitize is to minimize all trims. And I think that's the most important thing about digitizing is uh, being able to see your information here. I think a lot of times if you're if you're learning digitizing, if somebody's teaching you digitizing, I think it's important if you can when possible ask how many trims how many colors because tracing just by itself okay that could be kind of like the easy part the hard part is maintaining your design efficient all right let's push play so right here we're going to start with our walking stitch and we're going to create as we're walking we're also create creating our bridge all right bam now we walk to our first object. So an object is a shape. So here we're at our first shape and it's gonna create an edge run with a double zigzag as an underlay. Then it starts, it's gonna pause here and start from the other side. All right, now it's gonna create this object. Bam, finish off. All right, let's go a little faster here. And usually when you're doing your replay, this is where you find little small uh, errors or mistakes here, all right? So you can even run it slower. If, you know, on a normal day, you would run it slow just to kind of make sure you don't miss anything. All right, it's gonna come here, walk up here, bang, create that. Create that clean look there and finish off here finish there bam all right so one thing about this design uh, I like how it looks clean all in one shape I've seen the tridents okay I've seen it so many different ways very common shape that you see here I've seen these uh, these arrows broken down into pieces especially this one where we have our corners our three corners they're really, really sharp right here, right? It's gonna look very clean. And I sampled this on a polo and on a hat. So I know it's good to go. These are fresh and let's see it on a hat. All right, we are looking nice and clean. And as a reminder, this design is available for free download so you can follow along and leave any questions or comments down on the bottom and I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.